Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim the president of the Mounted Space Association, Martin Masih, and his assistant, Ahmad Niaz, Hugo Costa, the director of Portugal's space department. Um, scientists, physicists, um, everyone interested, ladies and gentlemen, um, good morning. Uh, usually it's quite easy to say a few words and get out of it without further embarrassment. Um, right now, uh, I have my doubts about that. Don't usually actually speak about space. But then, since you gave the invitation and Rugia suggested that it might be an idea to come and have a look at what you are trying to do, I did give it some thought. Surprisingly, um, we are, the Maldivians, are very familiar with space. All of our lives for generations, for over 1,500 years, we have been looking at stars and finding our direction through space. Arab navigators and Indian astrologers view their view that the stars are stationary compared to the planet suddenly gave them an idea that therefore you can find location from this relationship. Well, of course, you know that stars are not stationary. But as you travel on the train, you see that the trees are far, moving much faster than the mountains because they are apparently further away. And for uh, the navigator's purposes, the stars therefore are stationary. You would know that Ibn Majid had rationalized Arab navigation by the 1490s. Before Majid, there were many, many navigators looking at the stars, giving directions, giving locations, and spelling out routes. And the most beautiful thing about these routes are, they are written in verses, in poems. So therefore, we also have similar uh, poems that gives you routes to travel within the Maldives, travel to Calicut, travel to uh, uh, Bangladesh or anywhere in the Bay of Bengal, and all sorts of places. Uh, Majid's, Ibn Majid's navigation knowledge was circulated throughout the Middle Ages in the Indian Ocean, and Arabia, Persia, India, the Far East. And navigators were very, very familiar with this. Ibn Battuta didn't come to the Maldives on a mistake or by chance. He knew where he was coming. He knew it long time ago. He knew it when he left home that he, was, he had to actually come to the Maldives. Because you can't go to China without spending three to four months here. So you come to Calicut then come to Maldives, come to Kinolos, in fact, and stay there for a few months before when the monsoon changes and then you go you're on your way to China. These routes were lost um, in the 1400s and early 1500s. Uh, um, there is an accusation on Ibn Majid that he gave the route to Vasco da Gama um, and that is why Vasco da Gama penetrated the Indian Ocean. Now, thinking back, I think Vasco da Gama would have done it anyway. <laughs> and I also don't think that Majid gave it to him. Uh, this is a later accusation on Majid. We lost his books. And then in the 1840s, an Englishman named James Prince met a, Mold met a Maldivian navigator in Calcutta. And then his name was Said Hussain Didi. This happened in the early 1800s. And Hussain Didi said that he, had a ma he has a Majid book. He travels with this book. And he gets all his directions from this book. And 
So him, James, quickly took this knowledge uh, to the Royal Asiatic Society. And then again, we started searching for the Majid manuscripts. And then we saw the Turkish general, C.D. Celebi, him coming out with Mohit, spelling out exactly everything that Majid has written. Now this, the, the Turkish general again writes that he met a Maldivian navigator called Kamar. And he has a very funny instrument on how to measure the stars and the elevation. It's called a Kamal. And I'm sure most of you would know what a Kamal is. It measures the elevation, the altitude, therefore, of a star. And according to this Turkish general, the, only, the first time that he saw this equipment was Kamal using it, and it is still called Kamal. Well, of course, it's not used. The sextant came out of, after that. And then now we have the big, big telescopes. Uh, so for us, uh, my, what I'm trying to suggest is we shouldn't have a PR problem when talking about the space. Uh, very often, we are unable to move with the program because you'll be ridiculed. People who are, might ask you, what the hell are you trying to do? What are you talking about? We can't feed our people at home. You're talking about the space. But the, the idea, the knowledge that we've always been looking at the space, and the space has given us a livelihood, uh, given us a, a, a tradition, a lot of knowledge, and therefore a culture and a country. So I am sure that this is an excellent beginning that we can again go looking at the stars. But now we've reversed it. Instead of looking at the stars, we've decided to send our own stars and let them look at us, the satellites. Uh, I, am, I have no doubt that we need these satellites. Uh, there is a strong need for a low carbon development strategy. A development strategy that is less extractive, more recycling, less carbon, but with the same economic outcomes of high employment, GDP growth, but without trashing the planet. We need to find sustainable development methods. And for that science, for that knowledge, we need data. We need ocean temperature. We need the acidity of it. We need to know how many trees, how many coconut palms grow on an island. We need to know erosion. We need to know, we need to know everything, especially the tides, the currents. And the, this would give us the opportunity to build a low carbon society, to build a softer biological infrastructure. We are destroying our islands by interfering in its natural movements and behavior. If we can understand its natural behavior, and to do that, we need many, many years of science and observation and data. So I am sure that this workshop and this seminar is going to be extremely helpful and give us new knowledge and give us new ideas on how we may be able to use your program in our development effort. We have the President's Climate Change Advisor, Sabra Nuruddin here. Sabra would agree with me the amount of data that her department, the Environment Ministry, needs for us to do any of the projects that we are trying to do. That might be a small harbor project in a small island. It might be a water breaker. It might be an embankment. It might be just building a small school. But 
because we are doing it without understanding how nature is behaving, then we of course do the wrong thing at the wrong place, at the wrong time, at the wrong price. And therefore, um, we are very, very grateful that you are here today and welcome to the Maldives. Thank you.